over the course of your career of everything you've done, what would you say the worst advice you've ever gotten? <laughs> it's a good question. I'd actually say it applies to that. The worst advice I've ever got is you're too old, you're too young. You're too early, you're too late. <laughs> Right. You're too underqualified, you're too overqualified. I feel like we put these extremes on, we put these limits, boundaries, deadlines, schedules onto people. And I think that's bad advice. The amount of people that have said to me, Jay, I think you're too old to be doing this, or you're too young to be doing this, or Jay, you know what? You're just too underqualified for this role. Like, I think I've heard that so many times. And I think we start to internalize these statements and then we give up on our dreams or the things that are important to us. And I think we live in a world right now where I see, you know, you see 70 year old YouTubers, you see, <laughs> yeah. you know, you see 10 year old YouTubers, you see uh, people doing things as and when they want and can. And I think we've changed, I think the world has shifted and changed where like someone may say, well, I wanted to be an athlete and I'm too old to be a premier league football player. Sure. But that doesn't mean you can't play football on the weekends right. or the evenings or it doesn't stop you from doing what you want to do. And I think that's the worst advice that I've ever heard of like, it's not going to work. That's not a good idea. It's only not a good idea if you don't try it out. Yeah. I mean, my mom, whenever I'm afraid of doing anything, my mom always taught me that I'm only quote unquote a loser because I've always get scared of being a loser. If I fail people, everyone will know. But she said, you're only a loser if you don't try. Yeah. And I agree. You Do you feel that sometimes when people give you that advice, you're too young or too old, this and that is because they're projecting because they're scared they can never do it? Yeah, I think it comes, and, and I have compassion for that because I think we all project our limits onto other people and we like all that. project our insecurities onto other people. It's like, if your friend says to you, oh, I'm thinking about moving country and you've thought about it before, but you don't think it's a good idea or you're scared about it. Now when they say, you go, oh no, no, but have you thought about this, this and this? Yeah. And you like, you give them your thought process and they're like, yeah, but those are not things I worry about. So I think a lot of us, when we're giving advice or receiving advice, need to recognize we need to not project our insecurities and our issues onto other people. And same, when you hear advice from other people, make sure that you're not just adopting their insecurities exactly. and their issues. You have to filter that out for yourself. Yeah, I agree. When we, when my family and I won the green card lottery, all of our family members told us not to move. It would be so stupid for my father mm -hmm. this age. He was in his 50s and thank God my dad didn't listen and he moved our family to the US and then everyone else wanted to follow our footsteps <laughs> afterwards. Yeah, exactly. So. And that's a great example, right? And I think that happens with everything. It's like your friend says to you, you know what? I'm thinking of quitting my job and I want to start a podcast or <laughs> I want to, you know, whatever it may yeah. be. Now, you've also got to understand that when your friend projects their issues and insecurities, we shouldn't be upset about that. It's just someone trying to care for you and they're trying to show you love or they, they're looking out for you. And often thinking it through is actually pretty helpful because I also think we live in a world that, you know, I feel like we, we also just take these big rush changes as well. Like I think a lot of us are also living the other extreme where it's like, oh, I'm just going to do it anyway. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah. And it's like, Nah, maybe the middle approach is better. Like when I was trying to find my passion and my purpose, I was also working a day job that paid my bills and I spend my evenings and weekends doing what I love. And I think that that transition's healthy because it provides safety, it provides support. Whereas if I would have just thrown everything away and made this jump, maybe it wouldn't have worked because you don't create great work out of scarcity. You don't create great work out of fear and insecurity. Oh, I like that. That's, that. That is a really good point. I also like the fact that you looked at the other perspective of the fact that your friends or your family, all that, they're not coming from a bad place when they're giving you quote unquote poor advice. They're actually coming because that's all they know and they're just trying to be helpful. That's a nice pers uh, perspective yeah, to have. Yeah, I, I just want to live with no bitterness in my heart. You know, I, I made that commitment a long time ago. I was like, I don't want to live having bitter feelings or negative feelings towards any person or any group of people because it doesn't, carry me well. Like it doesn't make me feel good to walk around with a bitter heart. I like that. And, and I, I know you focus a lot about that. And I've spoken about that on my podcast as well. 